now moving on to the next panel discussion. The topic and focus is Bollywood and PR. How entertainment PR influence the brands and the society. And uh, amongst your loud applause, let's welcome our panelist, Paula Meglin, actor and CEO, Bhartiya Digital Party. Can we have a round of applause for the lady? And let's welcome Anurag Chauhan, founder of Humans for Humanity. A very warm welcome to our panelists. Thank you very much for joining in. And with the same, let's welcome the moderator, Mr. Ruhail Amen, Exchange for Media, BW Business World. The stage is all yours. This mic, okay. So rather uh, interesting topic, you know, post lunch, I think we needed this kind of a topic. Uh, uh, thanks, Paula. Uh, thank you, Anurag, uh, for joining us. Uh, before you stepped in, me and Paula had a brief discussion about, you know, few things, and I'm just going to straight, straight away ask my question. So uh, since morning, we heard conversation around brands and PR, you know, diversity and PR. So we are in the, you know, uh, an industry we're talking about that doesn't need traditionally a PR because everyone thinks that poster boys or poster girls, you know. Uh, uh, Paula, to you first. Uh, do you think uh, film PR uh, has evolved to an extent that it has become as important, relevant as brand PR, traditional brand PR? Yes, I, I definitely think that film PR is important. Uh, you can see, uh, so first of all, let me just set a little bit of context. Uh, I am not in Bollywood. <laughs> so I, I have come from Canada 10 years ago to India and I've been working for the last eight years, mostly in the Marathi digital entertainment industry. So um, we make Marathi web series, I write, direct, produce, and occasionally act, but uh, you could say that my point of view is very much from an outside of Bollywood POV, uh, where you probably like many people in this room, you see what's happening in the news, you see what, um, you know, when the next Bollywood movie is releasing, there's some boycott or there's something which is coming out attached to it, almost as if it's been planned in advance of the film as the film's PR strategy is being rolled out, so is the anti-film PR going out from the other side. Sometimes it's stronger, right? The anti-film PR, you know? Yes, it can be. And it's all about building up your narrative. And I think that uh, something that a lot of films have attempted to do in the last few years is anticipate what that bad PR could possibly be and try and build a narrative, preemptively build a narrative around it so that your film is protected or you're able to um, ensure that at least you will be getting some kind of an audience alongside your release. Um, as a digital uh, producer, uh, we've recently done a web series called B.E. Rozgar, which is on our YouTube channel. And uh, the show is about unemployed youth in Maharashtra, and it was very much a plan that uh, alongside of this series releasing and having, you know, A-list actors from the Marathi industry, we really wanted to get out the message as to why is this series going to be relatable for the maximum amount of people, and that is connecting on, you know, these, you know, unemployment among youth topics and, um, you know, especially with engineers, how do you sort of target your that, that's like the first core audience. And then it expands beyond that into how relatable it can be. So, uh, and you can see like a lot of other films like Padman and others have social issues attached to them going out as part of the success strategy. And of course, sometimes it's core to the story, um, but not every project has that and not every project has the ability to lean on that. But um, it's definitely extremely important. And I think 
most big budget films now wouldn't release without having a very clear PR strategy. Absolutely. Uh, Anurag, your opening thoughts. Uh, one, I must compliment on your style. Very, I'm, I'm uh, really wonderful. It feels great to have a panelist you know, who is all stylish and has these elements. But give me a sense of, do you think uh, film PR has come to become at par with the brand PR, uh, you know, over the years, because you know earlier uh, you used to have a manager that will bundle up into uh, many roles. You know, he'll be your makeup person, he'll be your go-to person, he'll be your PR also. Do you think there's a certain evolution that has taken place in the film domain? Of course, it's a big industry all altogether. If you see the PRs from the industry, well. There are people I know who have more than one PR. And sometimes they're not even actors, directors, or producers. They have two or three PR people who are managing their PR because it's a very, very important part. I mean, what, are the, what is PR doing? It's, it's, it's spreading awareness about whatever the product is, and the product is film. And at the same time, um, it's also making people curious. But as a personal belief, I still think what is very, very strong and which still exists is word of mouth. There's so many films, even without and with the PR, they don't work. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, there's so many films uh, with huge budgets of PR and their activities goes for months before the films come out. Yet, they're not able to make an impact on the society, yet they're not able to be so-called successful on the box office. So I wonder to myself it, if it always works. It might work in many scenarios. Also, the, the thing is that how good your film is, at the end of the day, what matters is, is the content of the film. PR is very important, but at the end of the day, according to me, what matters is the content. Well, uh, a lot of people might be intrigued about your journey into of course, the Indian film industry, and then that too into uh, Marathi film industry. I, I can read their intrigue. If you could give us a little bit of a backstory of your journey before I ask you my other question. Sure. So I studied filmmaking in Canada. And 10 years ago, I had an opportunity from the government of Canada to come to India and study the Indian film industry. And I'd come in completely blank with no expectations, only an old preconceived image of Bollywood as people singing and dancing in the Swiss Alps. And uh, my expectations were, or whatever thought I thought it was going to be, was completely blown out of the water um, when I learned about uh, you know, the new age cinema that had been coming out, filmmakers like Anurag Kashyap and many others. Uh, I ended up coming to Chennai first um, and then went to Mumbai, Pune and Hyderabad and so immediately got exposure to regional languages and learned that the Indian film industry is not one industry but many industries and after the first trip I was very much inspired and excited by the idea of what was happening in India. Um, I could see so much potential as to where things may go um, and you have to remember that 10 years ago, there was no Netflix in India, there was no uh, Amazon Prime, there was, you couldn't even use your American or Canadian Netflix subscription in, the, in, in India as a country. So uh, I could see from my perspective that there was going to be a lot of amazing growth and there was a chance for me to kind of try and tell my story and um, I met some fantastic people. Uh, people who I ended up partnering with eight years ago. We started a production company and uh, very quickly got into making digital ads and then realizing that digital was a place where we felt we had a lot of edge. We then started the first ever Marathi language digital entertainment channel on YouTube. And then it expanded into a full-fledged company with three channels we have Bharatiya Digital Party, Bhadipa, because in Marathi, um, you know, over there you say, over here you would maybe say for uh, Bharatiya Janta Party, you would say BJP, but in Maharashtra you would say Bhajapa. 
So when we came up with the name, we wanted to do a play on the idea of community and bringing people together under a name. So the banner was Bharatiya Digital Party. Since then, we've expanded into uh, travel and food and infotainment, social issues. So we have three channels. We do stand-up comedy, live events. We do talent management for writers and comedians. And we also produce for OTT and for our own uh, YouTube channel where we do a lot of content marketing for brands as well as our one of our main revenue streams. So uh, yeah, that's how I came here. you can speak Marathi also, right? I can, I can understand Marathi very well and I can speak okay. <laughs> I can speak also. I know three, three words. Uh, but coming on a serious term, uh, I mean, this just the longest question then to you. You know, uh, celebrities used to be, be in the Bollywood camp for the longest, you know. Whenever you needed one, you would look at Bollywood and then you would look to sporting icons, you know. Now with the rise of influencers, you know, there's a thin divide between the celeb and who is the big icon. Uh, does a PR's job in Bollywood in a celebrity management become uh, more complex with so many celebs popping out from your Instagram, from your sporting channels, from your Bollywood, from your uh, OTT platforms? Yeah, I think that one of the things which can differentiate an influencer and a celebrity is the use of PR, where an influencer comes out of the box saying, this is who I am. A celebrity generally becomes famous for their work in some particular field, usually in this case, it's acting uh, and or modeling or a combination of all of that. So um, when a celebrity starts to make their name in the industry, it becomes really important for them to start building out the narrative. How do you explain to the world who you are, what you stand for, where you come from? That partly comes from interviews, but it can come from events. It can come from how you manage your social media to the kind of brand campaigns that you sign on for. And it's also really important, um, I think, for a lot of celebrities, especially actors who have a future plan of diversifying beyond acting and maybe wanting to own a business or promote businesses, uh, get involved into social activism or anything like that. And uh, having, a, having a PR consultant or somebody who helps you with your PR is really important so that you can explain to the world what do you stand for. Uh, for example, personally, I love to drink whiskey. So I would definitely make a point of posting every once in a while about who oh, here's the new whiskey I've tried. These are the tasting notes uh, because I want people to know that that's a part of who I am and something that I enjoy. Uh, and so that you could call like a personal PR uh, because probably I wouldn't normally share it on social media unless I wanted people to know that. So for future, if in case any whiskey brand wants an endorsement, I'm, they know that they can look at me for that. You know, you know that. <laughs> so right. part of it's also anticipating future opportunities, future career choices that you might want to go into and building your image in that way. So that's that's why I think it's really important for celebrities to have PR. Anurag, your thoughts on the complexity of a PR's role when it comes to handling celebrities? Well, it's very complex to, to uh, I mean, I'm, I've seen so many of my friends who, I mean, I'm, I'll speak, I'll be the devil's advocate and I'll not just say that it's very difficult to handle celebrities, but it is very difficult to, to manage them because uh, as she said that it's, it's the pressure on the PR is not just portraying or doing what the celebrity is doing, but also what his future plans is, what her future plans are. And the whole pressure is to, to create an image which has to be politically correct, which has to be right in all ways. So, but what, what reminded me of, of uh, a small instance from my own life when she was talking about whiskey was, was about my clothing. Uh, I remember I used to walk into offices of ministers and politicians at the age of 14 and 15, and they'll shoo me out of their offices uh, only because I'll dress up in a casual, uh, you know, dress code and I'll go with my files and uh, I'm, I'm whatever project I was working in that particular time, it was waste management and they will just shoot me away from their offices. And one day I had someone tell me that, why don't you try wearing a kurta pajama? This was when I was 15 and just wearing that one kurta pajama, I walked into the secretariat in Uttarakhand 
for an for a meeting with the chief minister without an appointment i just had a file in my hand of a report that i wanted to submit not only i got i got permission to enter the secretariat but i also went to the chief minister and submitted that report so one suggestion coming from someone who is in the field of pr can actually change a lot of things about how things go in your life this worked out for me and this is how the, this is the role of a pr to show you the right direction because they they and for a lot of people they they might think pr is just you know getting media coverages or promoting something no it's it's way beyond that it's how you look what you speak what you eat whom are you meeting where are you going what kind of ad films you're doing it represents everything that you do and that is the role of a pr i think every brand touch point wherever uh, you know you are seen i think you know it has to match with your persona with your brand overall you know uh, a former entertainment journalist i mean i was a former entertainment journalist and uh, and when i look back and i look at the entire coverage that prs used to invite us to and now i see that on instagram that malaika has gone to the gym she is just arrived at the airport i mean the content that pr suggest it's really uh, not working out you know it's not really great content it's just a photo op uh how can we bring in actual great content in the pr you know how can prs have something great to offer to the media you know as far as seller pr is concerned okay i'll start with you anurag you know i'll say that uh it's it's not just the pr to be blamed for this it's the audience who wants this you know uh we have we've heard amazing songs that gulzar saab has written but he has also written some some songs that you would not imagine the gulzar saab has written and when i went to him and said why have you written this song he said because it's you it's the audience who wants this kind of songs it's not me i still am same gulzar who wants to write the the old songs but the audience today wants something new so the audience today wants to see what malaika is wearing while she's coming out of the airport they want to see what is she wearing when she's going to the gym and this is one reason why prs uh, they follow this this and and you know the content is bizarre but it is like you consume issue the yes. maximum likes on those uh, you know Absolutely. reels and all by the way but do you think we need to also offer something bigger and more um, you know uh, what do you call a healthier wholesome kind of a content beyond that you know uh, those moments alone it's very difficult um it is very difficult to do it as anurag said because audience is looking for that cringe moment or the the glamour moment whatever it is that's fun it's, it's a, takes a weight off of your back for a second right you don't have to think about your problems um and so if you want to get that message out uh, i think it's very important to try and couch that message in something else um for example a very crude example of this is um i don't know how many of you are aware that jackie shroff is a huge promoter of tree planting yes. are any of you aware of this okay so i'll tell you how i found out about this there was a video where it had gone completely viral he was at his farm in maharashtra and there were reporters around him asking him about what he was doing there and he gave a gali <laughs> he gave some gali which was hilarious and people were sharing the video because of that not because he was promoting tree planting all right if it was just promoting tree planting people would say ha ha whatever they wouldn't even care but as jackie shrop giving gali of course we're going to watch it so this is one very crude example another could be say something where uh we have to do this all the time with uh, advertising on our youtube channel we have to say promote a brand and we have to get it so how, how we take money from a brand so that we can integrate it in our content which then the audience has subscribed to watch so the audience is already coming to us to watch something that they know that they like could be a funny sketch could be a web series we have to hide the brand message within that in a natural way and when it comes to um social messages or something more wholesome as you say something that is for the good of society it's also important to provide it in a packaging that is easy to consume i feel that um let's see one more example and then i'll be quiet is we did a program called kai bolte which is like 
what are you yeah and uh we worked with uh communities uh underrepresented communities from across maharashtra uh sex workers adivasis farmers uh and we brought them to mumbai for four days and we taught them stand-up comedy as a form and what we were doing is working with an ngo called mara based in bangalore to teach stand-up comedy as a way for people to advocate for themselves to tell their own story and connect with an audience through humor rather than through sympathy and humor is a great way to generate empathy rather than sympathy and it was an amazing project where we then went on a road show people were telling stories about how they had child marriages how they got into the sex trade and uh just regular college going audiences were watching this and laughing and were shocked at the fact that they could connect with people who they thought would only ever be presented in a you know donate now kind of a context so these kinds of things are really important but packaging is everything and that's part of pr's job i think uh, all right the time is up but i want to ask a quick last question i just want yes. to add to that yeah, please do. you know uh, the film padman when it came out everyone it was it was a buzz everyone was talking about it but i felt that the pr was only on the surface was only very superficial because i've been working in that field for last 10 years and when i went to villages actually people do not even know about it and and how many people living in the villages who can't even afford eating food worry about what akshay kumar is doing on the screen and i'll give you a very small example from rajasthan uh, which was not many years ago right after the film came i was in rajasthan in a very small village called chomu which was 30 kilometers away from jaipur a woman who was 52 years of age asked me a question if i menstruate and that is the answer to what happens when films like that come out not that i'm against those films it's great because it is trying to spread awareness about sensitive topics it's trying to talk about various things but we have to understand if that topic or if the content of that topic reaches to the bottom of this society or not final quick question one minute answers you know so you're talking about you gave an example of how you got the right advice and things changed turn around right now for that you need quality people you know to be part of this profession right however the barrier is low to enter a film pr you know anyone everyone can do it and start their company how do we address that anyone i mean okay i'll start with you then you is there a way to address it i mean what is i mean how do we address this gap what is the best way that quality people become part of film pr and not everyone and anyone you know i think the the industry needs to change as an outsider to bollywood or even the marathi film industry there's a lot of rot it's quite corrupt uh there's a lot of people in charge who you know our gatekeepers and uh till that changes till those people exit uh <laughs> the culture there has to be a cultural shift within the industry yes, you're trying to say that definitely yes. there needs to be a cultural shift and that's why i think there's a lot of hope in the new digital space because there's opportunities for all sorts of people to come up and become something I agree with what she said and that's my final word <laughs> all right okay uh, maybe a round of applause for the panelists here Thank you for joining us Thank on this you. discussion.